Hello there, welcome to the Red Devil's Den. Uh, today we have so much to, to speak about in the short amount of time that we have. Coming off quite a sad loss uh, on Sunday to Manchester City. Um, I, didn't, I, I did a tidy reaction in a short version because I didn't really want to talk about it that much. Uh, Marcus Rashford, did he prove his point? Didn't he prove his point? Uh, we'll speak about that a bit later uh, in, in the video. Performances from Bruno Fernandes, Scott McTominay, Garnacho went missing. It was just a very, very um, unfortunate game, which we'll touch on in a tiny little bit. Uh, but the first thing I want to speak about is the tweet that came out yesterday from quite a few journalists, including Samuel Luckhurst. Um, that was a story that I think most of us who are Manchester United supporters would probably have heard already. We're running too much. And because we're running this much, we're getting injured and we're getting ill because we're being worked too hard. That sounds a bit familiar, doesn't it? It sounded familiar to me. I'm wondering if it sounds familiar to you. Not that long ago, under Ranik, we had reports coming out, leaks coming out, that players were afraid to drive home in the dark. I know at the time it was a joke and it was funny, but in hindsight now, it probably, sh we shouldn't have laughed at it. It was actually something serious because these players are trying to find every single excuse in the book to get another manager sacked. And I'm not in the business of calling, of calling players out when it comes to this sort of thing. I prefer to call players out when the performance on the pitch is not matching the hype around them. But this specific story, running too much, the training is too intense. I mean, come on. Like, I, I, I do not understand why whenever Manchester United lose a game, the next day or a few hours later, we get a story coming out saying we run too much or we're tired or it's because of all the games we played last season, which was 62 games or 63 games last season. This season is almost over. And we still have a particular few players blaming last season when we have about 10 games left in the season. If we, we probably have about 13 if we progress past Liverpool in the FA Cup. But I mean, realistically, where, where, does, where does all this come from? I'm, I'm seriously at a complete loss for words that we still get stories like this coming out. And a few reports on Twitter and a few journalists are coming out saying that Realistically, the manager has about three games left. And the problem that we have here again now is that are the players going to feed into this? Because we know what's going to happen. We've seen it so, so many times before. The players down tools, the manager gets sacked, a new interim or a new manager comes in. Let's say for the purpose of this video, it's Nagelsmann. Nagelsmann comes in. We have a bounce for four months, five months. We're winning every game. We're scoring tons of goals. Marcus Rashford's back on form. Scott McTominay, Bruno. The players are at, at full blast. All cylinders firing and we move. 18 months down the line, like we find ourselves here right now, we get a tweet coming out after a loss to Manchester City that we run too much. So my, the point that I'm trying to make is I don't see this from other clubs. I, I, don't, I don't see journalists close to Man City, Liverpool or Arsenal putting out tweets like this after a loss from sources within a club saying we run too much, we're overworked. And it pains me to say this, but I think that is the reason we are so far off Liverpool, Manchester City and Arsenal is because the mentality of this club, of some of these players is just astonishing. And it has been the downfall of Manchester United for a lot, a lot of years. I know some players are gone, but some players are still here. Some players are out on loan, but some are still here. Some are still sitting on that bench. Some are still on that pitch playing game in, game out. And at some point, do we get rid of them? And then the funniest thing is that Ineos will be looking to get rid of Rafael Varane, Casemiro, Aaron Wan-Bissaka, and maybe Anthony. I understand Anthony because we can all be. I, I don't. I don't appreciate the word flop. I don't. I don't think anyone is a flop. He's a trained professional, but I think 
the price tag that we put on him was just extremely, extremely high. Probably too soon in a league like the Eredivisie, which I know Eric Ten Hag came from as well, but it's not the Premier League, it's not the Bundesliga, it's not La Liga. Um, the price tag was extremely high. I think the pressure got to his head really quickly and he's been a ghost for... He's had no assists and no goals this season. So it's uh, in the Premier League this season. So the fact that we're looking to get rid of Rafael Varane, Casemiro, and to be honest, I'm I'm I was very much against Harry Maguire staying. I really did want him to go. But to be honest, I don't think he's got a mentality issue at that club. I think the way he bounced back after all the negativity around him, a lot of it was from fans of Manchester United because a lot of us didn't want him to go. I was included in that. West Ham were offering a good fee for him, but I understand financial and financial reasons. But he didn't sit around moping like I think a few other players did. I won't mention their names. Some are now playing in Germany. Um, he didn't sit around and mope. He waited for his opportunity. And when he came on, I think he was a model professional. I think he was a leader. And whenever he's played this season, he's put in a shift. Some of the performances weren't as pretty as we'd like, but he's always looks like he's giving 100%. He always looks like he's invested. And you can say a lot of players in that team sometimes don't look like they want to give 100% or look invested. So I've been super, super impressed with, with Harry Maguire um, and, he's, and his comeback. And I think six months ago, I would have put him in the category of leaving the club. Right now, I don't necessarily think he has to go. I think him as a third or fourth choice centre-back because of his mentality. Um, and clearly he's grown in his leadership. I think when the captaincy was taken from him, Again, he didn't mope about it. He put out he put out a statement. Um, and I think he's fought for the badge ever since. So the, the point that I'm trying to make is that I don't see this sort of behavior from elite clubs. I don't I don't see this sort of behavior from clubs at the top of their game where players are putting out this sort of stories to the press. Um, I don't think it's fair on the manager. I don't think it's fair to us fans who those who go to watch the game pay a lot of money. Us pay a lot of money to watch it on television. Uh, but when these players put on the Manchester United um, shirts, there should be some sort of pride and the minimum should be 100%, I think. So the th that I just wanted to speak about that first because it actually really irritated me seeing that again um, after we experienced it under Ranik and Oli as well. So I think moving, moving forward, uh, we have a game this weekend against Everton. I... I, I don't actually know what to expect. I'm hoping that the players who are still behind the manager are stronger than those who are not, and they can still come together and put a shift in, but I very much doubt maybe that that would happen right now. So I, I don't I don't actually I don't actually know what might be I need to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. So I don't actually know what what is possibly going to happen on the weekend when we play Everton. But whatever happens, um, I think the manager's future is already written, whether it's from Ineos or from the players, we don't know. Uh, but moving on, who will play? Who will replace Eric Ten Hag? Let's say Eric Ten Hag gets sacked in the next two weeks after that international break. We, we, we come back, we play Liverpool next Sunday. He loses that game as well. We lose to Everton um, and he gets the sack. Who comes in? Who is the who is the next manager for Manchester United? Tons of names being thrown around. De Zerbi, Graham Potter, Nagelsmann, Tuchel. Um, some people who think that Xabi Alonso will come to Manchester United. Extremely funny. Bayern Munich have already opened talks with him. They know that a ton of clubs are going to be calling him, um, including Liverpool. But I think for, for Manchester United, I hate the fact that I'm speaking about a replacement for our manager at this time again, this time of the season again. It's it's sad. I don't I don't I don't think it's it's something that any fan should should go through. And let me know in the comments if Eric Ten Hag does lose his job before the end of the season, who do you see coming in? To be honest, a lot of people are not speaking about the fact that 
it could be Darren Fletcher that just steps in and is interim until the end. And we know what happened the last time when an ex-Manchester United player comes comes in as an interim manager. We start singing a song about a bus. So uh, Darren's at the bus. It doesn't really make sense, does it? Um, but it could be Darren Fletcher. But I, um, the Zerbi, huge, huge favourite of Ineos. Two Carl favorite, Nagelsmann favorite, Graham Potter favorite. Um, I think the the Graham Potter and the Zerbi thing makes sense because Ineos would want to set up Manchester United the way Brighton was set up. Realistically, they want to do that, and you need a specific manager for that sort of system. So the system is a CEO, a football director, uh, and they're kind of scouting players putting players into the system and the manager is not super involved with who they bring in. So the scouting is is brilliant as you've seen Brighton over the years. And I think that's the model that Ineos want to take. It's the low cost model. Uh, you bring in youth players, you develop them, you sell them off for big money like Brighton has done. Um, and at the moment, we only know of two managers that fit that profile. It's Graham Potter and De Zerbi who actually come from Brighton. So. Um, I, I don't have a verdict just yet on who I think it will be. I think closer to the time after when, when, when we know the result of Everton this weekend, I think I'll start thinking pretty hard about who I think the next manager of Manchester United will be. Again, it saddens me that I'm in this position speaking about this. It's not fun. Um, but we have to be realistic that these, these players can down tools at any time and just decide we're not playing today. And it's over from there. We move on, uh, you know. So it's a, uh, it is quite a quite a sad state to to be in. I'm hoping for a great result. I'm gonna do a match preview um, later on this week. Just speaking about the players, Rasmus might be back. Uh, he will be a huge, huge change, a huge difference to to that to that front line. Um, I was actually super impressed with Hoyland, Rashford and Gonacho as our front three. Uh, I think Rashford was kind of coming into his stride a bit. But yeah, I'm going to speak about that later on in the week. Please drop a like on the video. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments as well. I respond to every single comment, so please drop it down. Uh, if you've got a good point, I'll even add it into the next video. But thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.